This may be one of the most consequential foreign trips by a U.S. president ever. After 10 days of a cabinet-wide defense, very public one, of Israel's right to defend itself in the wake of last Saturday's heinous terror attack, one that's left more than 1,300 Israelis murdered and at least 200 innocent souls held hostage, the president of the United States of America is set to travel to Israel as that nation contemplates just about all bad options for the way forward. Hostage rescues are viewed by all experts as excruciatingly complicated and dangerous. A ground war in Gaza risks the safety of thousands of innocent civilians and a swelling humanitarian calamity. And the saber rattling from Iran is impossible to ignore. This afternoon, President Joe Biden is scheduled to depart Joint Base Andrews for Israel, where the U.S. and Israel will shake hands on a plan for so-called safe zones that would allow humanitarian aid to reach civilians in Gaza. And they need it. As we speak, protests are rapidly spreading across the area following a bombing a short time ago at a hospital in Gaza. The Palestinian Health Ministry says that 200 to 300 people could be dead from that strike. An Israeli spokesperson says the hospital was not an IDF target and blames the strike on the militant group Islamic Jihad. This is obviously a developing situation, and it is one that we will continue to follow for you. More broadly, though, thousands of lives hang in the balance. If nothing changes in Gaza in the next 24 to 48 hours, lack of medical care, food, drinkable water, electricity, and diesel, we could be seeing catastrophic collapse there of society as Israel goes about its bombardment, retaliation for the brutal terror attack orchestrated by Hamas terrorists. The New York Times reports even safer cities in Gaza are currently in crisis, where people are sleeping in the streets. Quote, long lines in front of water tanks, bakeries, and market stalls, with fights erupting over the last remaining bread loaves and tomatoes. Some people are building ovens from sand and soil to bake bread in the traditional way, hoping to save their families from hunger. And so President Joe Biden is expected to arrive in Israel in a matter of hours, not only tasked with finding a way to save lives, save innocent lives, including those of the hostages still being held by the Hamas terrorists, but also to engage in the kind of careful diplomacy that may represent the best chance for avoiding a broader regional conflict that could spin out of control in the Mideast. In that way, the president's trip serves as an irrefutable gesture of the strength of the alliance and bond between the United States and Israel against Hamas. We begin the hour with NBC News correspondent Allison Barber at the Israel-Gaza border. Um, Allison, we have started every, every day with um, what you've seen and who you've talked to, and it is always this, you, you sort of fill up our understanding of what's happening there and how people feel um, so, so expertly, but, but I do want to start with asking you, just the hour that we've been on the air, we've heard different explanations for what could be the explanation for the strike at the hospital in Gaza, and I wonder what your latest reporting is on that. Yeah, there's still so much we don't know right now. Finger pointing is what's happening right now. I was just trying to message with a couple of people, contacts we have inside of Gaza, some of them doctors working at, working at the hospital that is believed to be treating some of the people who uh, are coming from that attack at the Al Khali hospital having a difficult time getting in touch with them. Someone else just messaged us who is a civilian saying that she can't talk or send any sort of video message right now because there is no power, no service. And on top of that, right now, she just feels so unsafe. She's scared to talk publicly. What we know about what has happened inside Gaza right now at the Ahali Hospital is that hundreds of civilians are dead. Gaza's Ministry of Health, their director, they say that they are having a difficult number, right, a difficult time right now getting the exact death toll because the situation on the ground is this. They say there are so many bodies that many of them, and this is graphic, but I think it's important to explain to viewers, they say that many of the victims of the bodies that are being moved to the other large hospital as they're trying to count how many people have died, that many of the bodies are charred and they have a large presence of dismembered limbs. Um, we have seen videos on the ground from our teams. Uh, some of those videos, many of those videos are much too graphic to show on TV right now, but in them we can see some of what the Gaza Ministry of Health is describing of charred, of, charred bodies of dismembered remains of people just in absolute agony, so severely wounded from 
this attack on the hospital. According to officials inside of Gaza, everyone in this area, all of the victims, they believe they are all civilians, people who were sick or injured, being treated at the Al uh, Ahali Hospital and also people who were there seeking shelter because for so many people in Gaza, hospital schools, those are often the strongest structures to get to safety. So there were people who were there displaced internally that had gone there to try and have a safe space and then ended up being anything but safe. Israel right now, they are adamant in saying they had nothing to do with this. They claim that the group inside of Gaza, Islamic Jihad, carried out a rocket attack that they were trying to target Israel and that they misfired and struck this hospital inside of Gaza. Hamas, other officials, other Palestinian officials, the health ministry, they are saying that this was the result of Israeli airstrikes. What we do know for sure is that this is a massive casualty event. From the videos we have seen, from what we are hearing inside, it appears largely civilians have been hurt here. Some of the images we've seen, Nicole, you can see children in them. Again, these were people largely, we believe, who were at a hospital because they were already sick or injured and needing care, or they were there because they thought it was a safe place to seek shelter. Because remember, even though people have been told to head south, they have been told to evacuate, and according to the UN, about 600,000 Gazans have moved to the southern part of um, this area of land, this territory. There are a lot of people who have been too afraid to leave. There have been reports that Hamas has not let them leave. Leaving is difficult for a host of reasons. And there were people inside of this hospital who thought they were in a safe place and they were not. Nicole. NBC's Allison Barber. Um, I'm going to say what I always say. Please stay safe, my friend. Thank you so much for your reporting there.